All right, folks, it's a new day. It's a new shirt. By the way, if you like this shirt, you can get it at uh, my Teespring store down in the video description. The next thing we're going to do is try to find the right PD balance. And let's talk about that for a second. Chris's video about the PIDs goes in-depth into... Well, actually, it's not that in-depth. It's why he's so good. It's very simple and very th complete at the same time. But it talks about what the P, the I, the D, and Feed Forward do. The short version, though, is that P and D are kind of in opposition to each other. The P term is pushing the quad to speed up or slow down, depending on w whether the quad is moving faster or lower than the set point that you're commanding by your stick deflection. So if the quad is rotating faster than it should be, the P term pushes it to slow down. If, the, if it's moving slower, it pushes it to accelerate. And the D term basically just resists any change. So they, they're in opposition to each other, and that's important because the P term by itself, if you just had a P controller with no D term, in order to make the quad properly responsive, you would also get a ton of overshoot. It would go, fat, go faster, go faster, go faster, go faster. Oh no, we went too fast. Slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Okay? And that would just, you'd get these oscillation and ringing. Um, so the D term kind of provides just enough of a drag on the P term that it keeps the P term for, from overshooting. But they need to be in balance with each other. So anytime you think about P and D, you want to think about the, the ratio between P and D, or the PD balance. Now, we've, we've found our ideal D term, so the next thing we need to do is find the correct P term to push against the D term just enough that the quad is properly responsive without so much P term that it's overshooting and ringing and oscillating, or insufficient B term that it's sort of overdamped and just kind of like moving through molasses. That's what we're going to do here. So for this test, we're going to go out in the field and we're just going to do a ton of full stick flips and rolls. We only need about a minute of data. We also want some yaw. Okay, that should be plenty. Bring that in. A uh, little tip for you, make sure you disarm before you touch down so that little bump from landing is not in the log. We'll just disarm and drop it. Now this is the point where we're going to start diving into black box. And Chris does give a method you can use by listening to your motors to try and figure out whether your PD balance is right if you're not interested in getting into black box. But I really think black box is going to do a much better job of showing us what's going on. What we're looking at here is the step response tool in PID Toolbox, and here's how to interpret that. Imagine that at a given time the quadcopter is flat and level and the stick is centered. So the quadcopter is not rotating and it's not being commanded to rotate. As you, let's say that then you deflect the stick to full deflection. At that moment the quadcopter is being commanded to rotate. Let's say your rotational rate is 900 degrees per second. The quadcopter is rotating at zero degrees per second, but is being commanded to rotate at 900 degrees per second, so it is moving slower than the commanded rotational rate. And that's going to be indicated here at t time equals zero. This line is down at zero, which means that the quadcopter is moving slower than the rotational rate. The quadcopter will begin to accelerate towards the, the commanded rotational rate of 900 degrees per second. And when it reaches that rotational rate, when it reaches the commanded rotational rate, this line will be at 1.1.0. If the quadcopter overshoots and moves faster than the commanded rotational rate, this line will go above 1.0. And what we're seeing here is for every moment in time, how for every moment in time following the input of a command, how is the quadcopter moving relative to that command? And we can see, for example, that it takes about this long 
for the quadcopter to first hit the commanded rotational rate. That's known as our rise time. Okay, And then we can see that in this case, well let's look at the pitch axis. We can see that in the case of the pitch axis, the quadcopter accelerates towards the commanded rotational rate and then it overshoots and moves faster than the commanded rotational rate from, uh, don't know what the x-axis, milliseconds, millise 100 milliseconds. So this is going to be 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 milliseconds. So at about 20 milliseconds, the quadcopter hits the rotational rate and then exceeds it and then tracks back down towards it. Now Chris gives us a guideline for what you want to look for in an ideal situation. And let's, let's make this full screen so we can get a better look at it. And this is just basic PID control theory. If we have excess P gain, we will see a big overshoot followed by a lot of ringing oscillation. If we have insufficient P gain, we will see an overdamped response with no overshoot, a long rise time, and no ringing. And what Chris says we were looking for is this line with just a teeny bit of overshoot and no ringing. Now that is classic PID control theory, but my experience with working with PID toolbox is it's very, very difficult to hit that in the real world. And one reason it's difficult to hit that in the real world is that these, this data is very messy. It's very noisy. You can see this orange uh, error bar here. So this is the average of the error bar, but the error bar is actually quite wide. So we're never going to see a perfect uh, classical uh, damped PID response. Uh, and a lot of times I find that raising and lowering the P gain doesn't produce the classical response that you're looking for. But nevertheless, we can try and tweak these numbers to hit that goal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable this checkbox, which focuses just on snap maneuvers. It gets rid of all just the regular flying around, uh, because snap maneuvers are where the PID response is going to be most apparent. And you'll see that also reduces our error bar sub by throwing out some of the, just some of the other data. So what do we see here? On roll, we have just a little bit of overshoot, no ringing, and no undershoot. That's damn near perfect. On pitch, pretty much the same thing. And on yaw, we've got just the beginning of an oscillation. It overshoots and then just sort of bounces back down instead of going right to 1.0. So there's maybe just a little oscillation on yaw. Now I will say, in my experience, having the P term be just a little too high, having just a little bit of an identifiable overshoot with maybe a teeny bit of undershoot, I think that actually produces a sharper flying quad. And the fact that you're slightly tracking the, the, the uh, set point not quite perfectly isn't that noticeable. Um, so I would actually probably, I think Chris would say that this roll and pitch graph are just about perfect, but that probably I would want to push the P term just a little higher. As far as yaw goes, theoretically we would want to lower the P term. The thing is the yaw axis on a quadcopter doesn't have a lot of authority because it's based on motor torque. And so in my experience, it's actually really hard to get a clean overshoot and ring on yaw. The yaw axis just will not oscillate until the P term is way, way, way too high. So in my experience, the yaw axis actually can approach that properly damped look, but on pitch and roll, I like to see a little bit more overshoot. So let's go in to the beta flight and see what we can do about that. What we want to do is raise the P gain while leaving the D gain the same. And because of the way beta flight 4.2 sliders work, what we need to do then is the PD balance slider actually changes the D gain and leaves the P gain the same. That's the opposite of what we want. So what we're going to do, our D gain is 42 and 45. And I think, well, we don't have separate sliders for the three axes. So if we want to use the sliders, we're going to have to tune all these axes together. So let's tune the pitch and roll axis and leave the yaw axis alone. We don't, I don't do a lot of snap rolls on, snap moves on yaw anyway. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise the P gain. So I want PD balance to go up by one click and PD gain to go down by one click. And that's going to leave D roughly where it was while raising P. Is that right? 42, 45, 59, 64. 
No, I want to go the other way. I want to raise the PD gain. I want D to be at 4245. So now everything has gone up by one click and we'll take PD down, balance down. We're about the same. Yeah. So now we've increased P while leaving D the same. Well, let's go fly it. We'll get another black box log and we'll see how that comes out. That was a very sharp stop. That'll be fine. I'm also just using my eyes to look at what's going. There was there were a little dips. There were a couple little dips in there that surprised me. So we're not just going to tune based on what we see in the black box, but also what we see with our eyes. How do we do here? Let's look at the snap maneuvers. Interesting. So it looks to me like roll has a larger overshoot now. Still no ringing, but a larger overshoot and pitch also has a larger overshoot with still no, no ringing or oscillation. And this is classically what I think yaw usually looks like. A rapid rise and then kind of a... There's seldom... I don't know why there was a little bit of ringing in the last one. Um, I'm going to keep going a little further just so we see what happens to the quad, how it flies. Um, I feel like this probably is where I would stop. Uh, and Chris probably would have stopped actually the last step below. Let's go one more though. We're going to go PD gain up by one, PD balance down by one. Yep, this is ridiculously high P gains. There you go, and save. <laughs> Those, sh those stops seem really nice and sharp. Wow. Really nice and sharp stops on roll. Oh, a little shuddering there, though. Oh, a little skipping. Uh-huh. Hey, folks. Joshua from the future here. This skipping, the little stuttering and skipping you see there, turned out to be because my battery strap, the tail end of my battery strap was slapping against my flight controller. So uh, mechanical issues. I did not discover that until after I finished this video. So I'm going to continue PID tuning uh, without knowing that. But I just wanted you to know that. Bounce back on. Yeah, now we're getting bounce back on roll on the yaw. You can absolutely see bounce back on yaw visible. Roll seems just about perfect. A little sharp bounce on pitch, and we're getting some jittering. A little bit of jittering. So my gut feeling from that flight is that roll is just about perfect. Hitch is, I'm seeing a little bit of a whoop, a little bit of whoop at the end of each move. So pitch is too high and yaw is definitely too high. We've gone to, we're getting a, a distinct whoosh, 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 at the end of each move that uh, it's, it's literally bouncing back. Let's see what the step response graph shows. Let's see if it agrees with me. That doesn't really matter because I can see what I see in the camera, but yeah, interesting. Here I can absolutely see that in the yaw axis if I don't enable snap maneuvers. There's this clear overshoot, undershoot, overshoot, and ring. If I go to snap maneuvers, pitch and roll don't seem like they've changed that much. And this is one of the reasons why I find, I mean, the advice in Chris's uh, tutorial is absolutely correct. But a lot of times when you try and implement this kind of thing in the real world, it just doesn't bear out. Are we approaching ringing oscillation? Are we getting additional overshoot? It's really hard to tell. The error bars are wide enough and I, I don't know. Um, I think from the flight characteristics that I think, I think we've gone a little too far. And the other thing to keep in mind is that some of the sharpness that I'm trying to get with the P-term adjustment actually is better achieved with feed forward, which is the next step.
So, so we're going to go back here to the PID tuning tab and we're going to put the sliders back at 1.0, which is so boring that the default turns out to be correct, but that did produce the result that seems to be closest to what Chris is uh, going for and you know how they say trust the process right we're just gonna we're gonna follow it through to the end as opposed to you know going off book sheesh my guy this is part two of the series part two from th three uh, probably three so link down below in the video description to the whole playlist or you know subscribe because just subscribe already What's your problem? Woo!